Welcome to Seriously Speaking. It's the month of women still, and I think I'm going to give my mom a gift this time around. And in, when I was young, I used to take her Hollandaise. I want to wear it. Now I'm going to buy her one. After all, I can't be woman of the month 2014 and not do something good for my mom. So I'm showing you things that you can do with Frisco on the show for the rest of this month, like I said. But I think I'm going to get my mom a gift. I'm going to get her one jumping horse, one of those good ones. But for the show today, the theme remains hashtag press for progress. Leave no woman behind. But I'm asking a question. Leave no woman behind. What about the men? As we are hashtagging and pressing for progress, we see many strong women today. Are we in some ways, somehow, emasculating our men? I don't know, but I have two seasoned professionals in the house to discuss this, and I'll return with them if you don't go away. I've been accused severally, you only bring your friends, but where else will you get people who have the input? I know people who can respond to a particular topic. I don't have to think twice. That's why I have on set today two friends of mine, and they're all parents to younger men. That's why they are here. I have Sonny Rabo of Sonny Rabo Life fame, my big brother. It's nice to have you. Thank you. Yeah, I used to be on the other side now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. I'm admiring you. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, you. And then, of course, Ifoma Idigbe, my friend. And you know, actually, Ifoma and I, just watch out. Very soon, you will see us on TV talking, on conversations, yes. right? It's yes. nice to get her on TV at last. I remember the first time I said, let's talk. Ifoma says, no. I don't like such things. She's very prim and proper. Are you sorry? Are you sorry? <laughs> but it's nice to have you. I mean, Ifoma has two sons. You have one son. Your son is married now. One son is married. One son is married. The other one is yeah, He's hoping. about to get married. Are you yeah. serious? He's engaged, yes. How, how did they do it? Please, let's start with Ifoma. How did they do it? How did they find the women? Did you develop strong men who are not afraid of women or what? I think that's part of it. First of all, my sons are used to me working. Oh. They're used to me having my own opinion. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't threaten them. I think part of the problem, to, to go to the, the comment you made, is that... About us emasculating a, the yes, men. Yes. Men are brought up with a sense of entitlement. Culturally, traditionally, there's a sense of entitlement. You're the man. You're the one who has a right to be like this and to be like that. And then even people quote the Bible about the place of women, things like that. And so when you're brought up in that climate, and then women are beginning to become educated, beginning to say, this is what I'd like to do. This is what I want to do. And not all women are chasing to get married before they're 30. There's a, there's a change that some people can't cope with. And then when you find that women also seem to have this ability in the workplace to respond better to bosses in a certain way. Or maybe bosses don't feel as threatened by women. I don't know what it is. Because in the workplace now, it looks as if they prefer to employ women that women are more focused. You talked about that when you were making your introductory remarks. Absolutely. More focused. When you talk to, when I talk to young people, young men, young, young women, it's very clear to me that the girls have a very clear vision of where they're headed mm -hmm. and what they want to achieve. And that bothers me because it's a man's world. Still and so is? It is still a man's world. And so men traditionally lead. And so we have men who are leading, who are insecure. Well, it's funny. You listen to that. I know we, we I all know. I was just nodding because, yes. I mean, she's almost practically spot on saying some of the things you said, the traditional bit. When a man is sure that he's in charge and then there's an opposition of sort, what's the opposition? It's just a difference of opinion, not the fact that, okay, because I'm the man, what I say is law, yeah. but that somebody comes with a counter opinion that ought to be taken, you know, with a bit of decent approach to debating it and agreeing, mm -hmm. but then you now say, I have said my word is law, <laughs> leave it like that. If you have a, a woman who is educated, who knows her rights, and who believes she's right, then there will be opposition. So the question is now, I know that there are many NGOs who are working, and all this talk about gender parity, gender rights. My fear is, has that actually made women oversabi? and men not being able to deal with them? I think, I think it's more like the women are on the war path of so-called reclaiming what be, they believe belongs to them. War path? If I'm war path. Let me put it this is, is When I say war path, it's like, look, I don't know how women debate with themselves and how they interact outside, but when they get back home, I have some friends who discuss, and they come and tell you, look, 
I don't know, this is what my wife wants to do. And I said, no. Why are you handling yours? And I'll say to my wife, <laughs> well, my, my own case, my wife discusses with me. So you let I know, her discuss with yes, you? Yes, but we, do, we disagree. We do disagree. You know? But when she discusses with me, I know where she's going. And if I see merit in that argument, I just let her be. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. In fact, they respect you more if you let them be. This is exactly what That's it is for truth. me. If, There's a competition that should not be there in the first place. I don't think it's mutually exclusive to be a really good wife and mother and to be a working woman. It's a matter of attitude and perspective. There are different roles. Those are different roles. Those are different sides of you. And so when you're in the workplace, if you're a boss, if you're a senior woman, an executive in the workplace, you do what you need to do. When you come home, there's a deference you give to your husband. Deference? There is a deference. There's a respect. Are you, are you using to the that, those words well? I am. You, there's a deference you give to him because he is the head of the home. And it doesn't mean that his word is law. It simply, it simply means that Some you give him a respect. No, there's a respect that you need to give. Yeah. In any event, um, men also give to, need to give their wives respect. But there's a respect you give to a man. You know that there should be food in the house. He should be fed. These are just natural roles that don't interfere with your being an intelligent woman. So I don't, I don't see the conflict in those roles. But I think that because men are becoming increasingly insecure and they're equating an educated woman who works and who earns well with competition. It doesn't sit well. It's not competition. So I think there's an attitude change that needs to happen. On which side? On both on sides? On both sides. On both sides, because the other thing as well is this. If increasingly these days, you can't tell who is earning more. In the <laughs> past, it might be the man. Right? It was mostly men. But now, women are earning just as much or more than their husbands. It shouldn't change the dynamic, except that the ego steps into place. On which side? Usually on I the men's question. side. Usually, <laughs> usually, usually on the men's side. However, what then happens is that because traditionally men are supposed to provide, women become slightly resentful if they have to Thank provide. You. I was just going so to it's go a there. double, it's, it's, it's a two-sided okay, thing. Let me, let me ask Sonny, if, for example, Betty, your wife, earned much more than you. And today, she's bringing money, bringing money. Would you be bold enough to open the fridge and be drinking all the beer and I eating would, the food? Well, thank God I don't drink <laughs> in that oh. wise. But honestly, if she brings money, for example, if I'm broke, mm -hmm. and, she asks, and I ask her, do you have some money? She doesn't say no, if she has. If she doesn't have... It doesn't make you less, you know, you don't feel like... No, no, no. I, see, but what, what if, I have what, no what inhibition. If she, what, if, what if she talks to, you know, let me give you an example. I will use a beer example. The, the woman is the one paying the bills, right? And then one day, she comes home, the guy is going, he's, he's not doing any work. He's at home, sitting down. And he's, he, she's, he's taking a bottle of beer. And all she says is, ah, should you be drinking beer? And the guy says, eh, is it because you're the one that bought the beer? Well, see, that's the point. But I haven't reached that stage where... There's a dominant control of who is doing what. Do what if that's the case? So, yeah, if that is the case, then there's a small or petty mindedness on the part of whoever is trying yeah. to attack first. Yeah. If the woman is feeling that she has so much money and so because she wants to and because of that she wants to lord it over her husband, there will be war. You, you know, I remember that's um, one. But on the other hand, sorry. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, if the man feels okay, you this woman, because some men too are they are that bad. Thank you. You know, they can Sorry. be also... <laughs> <laughs> That's my own. <laughs> you know, they can also be very arrogant and unnecessarily, you know... Um, Male. No, but um, unnecessarily aggressive when they shouldn't. Then they now begin to mess around outside mm -hmm. and That's begin to look down on their women inside. So all of those imperfect behaviors yes. would definitely affect yes. the equation. And did you see the movie, War of the Roses? An old movie. Yes, Sonny, don't show your old. age here, please. But, uh, I'm People 60, are watching things I'm like 60, the Black Panther. You're talking month, about baby. <laughs> six, six minus six, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when you see that movie, it tells a lot. Go and watch that movie even today. That movie was in the 80s or somewhere like that. Yes, but, Mike Douglas and uh, Kathleen Turner. But you know, my, my point is this. Somebody made the point that maleness is not incompatible with humanity. And, yeah. and I think a lot of the time, uh, we don't, or uh, with hu being humane, mm -hmm. men are brought up to, to be tough. 
a lot of men are brought up not to cry. Well, you, sometimes, you, sometimes, you, sometimes, you, sometimes. I love a man that cries, by the way, because you see that it means that he's strong enough and confident enough to, to know that she... tears, yes, that tears show his humanity and that they're not a sign of weakness. So, so upbringing. Well, she's speaking for me because sometimes I do cry. <laughs> <laughs> upbringing matters. Well, you do cry. That's why you're well, different. I mean, if I'm watching a movie, the tears just come out as if Okay, I'm so ladies, happy. maybe you should watch out for men who cry. But I must, take a, <laughs> I must take a break now so that I can come back and continue my conversations because they both have NGOs that they are working to help to change perception and things like that. We'll be right back on Seriously Speaking. So welcome back. You know, I, I said, I, I worry because I have sons, I have daughters. None of them married yet, but in that, I start wondering, well, are my daughters so, you know, mature and so independent that men are scared of them or what? Sonny, tell me. Good question. Now, I but don't men think, are scared I, of some women, shall No, no, there are cases. It doesn't mean that it, go, it doesn't run across board like that. Mm -hmm. I think what you're looking at is our class of men or children. We're in the same category of, of mm -hmm. class. You know, what about those down there? What about those maybe upper? Mm -hmm. We have to look at the A, B, C, D and begin to, okay, what about a child, your daughter? Mm -hmm who falls in love with a D-class son. I, I, where, would they, where would they find them is the question. Well, they, they do mix... find them. Uh -huh. The prince and the pauper, they do find them. What happens is whether the parents will agree. Oh. The parents never allow such things to happen. From either class, by the way, but, whether but, male or female. But parents do these days because... So her, her, son, her, her son is married to an Oimbo. No, yeah, no, no, we're not no, talking about racial differences. differences. No, we're talking so, about talking class. About, yes, what yes. I'm saying is, because you see, when those children are educated, people it's always aspire class. to improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They improve, and then if they're open-minded enough, they will accept that if they're given sausage and egg in the morning, it's not to try to pull them down. And if you give them boiled yam in the morning, it's not to say, I know that's where you're coming oh, from, so that's what you're going to get. So for me, the point I'm making here is that Attitude is a choice. Very, very it's, it's important. A, it's, a, it's a choice. Yes. And the reason you can talk the way you talk is because you're open-minded. Jude is also very open-minded, my husband. husband. Yes. We can have a conversation. It, money and who earns it is, is never a subject of discussion. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't arise. If there's something to be done, it's done. Whoever, done, who, whoever does it is one it. of those things. So you, what's your NGO doing trying to change such perceptions? You run, for the past two years, you run... Yes, you know, um, Youth Republic. Empowerment Forum. Mm -hmm. And okay, look, what's causing this problem? Joblessness, unemployment. More girls are not, getting jobs than boys. It's not that true. Because, I mean, I had a class, um, the first forum was, we had about 1,500 plus people. The number of boys and girls was almost, okay, in fairness, the boys were more than the girls, yes. you know. Yes, but even the second edition, something like that. But what I found was that the job market or the labor market has become so, you know, over bloated because the jobs are not there. And when the jobs are not there, there's need for creativity. There's need for people to now begin to think of how to start business by themselves and become something of value so to that's, themselves that's and their family. That's what your family. NGO tries to do. That's what we try to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be male, it could be female. It's not gender related in any one direction. If I'm, on the other hand, you're trying to change the psyche of the male in particular. Yes, um, my foundation is called Boys to Men Foundation because I think that That's boys, an are, boys are falling. Yeah, boys, to men. boys to men. Boys to men. Yeah, okay. boys are, men are refusing no, boys. to grow up. Or no, what? no, it's not that. It's, it's, to, it's to influence and develop both boys and men to become better men, to expose them to various programs leadership programs, public speaking, even etiquette, yeah. things like that. And, and to engage at a level that makes them comfortable being men, whether or not they're the breadwinners or not. Because it's a matter What's of- What's driving a, that? Is it Wimby's? It's, it, it isn't. It's just my observation that I'm worried about the boys. And, and it's not about the less privileged either. It's more middle class I want to it's deal with. Because they... everybody deals with the less privileged or with women. Yeah. Nobody is dealing with the boys who are middle class. Do we agree, though, that our women empowerment can emasculate men? It can. No, no, of course. It's it can. Definitely and, and, and it is doing so. But I think that's also because of the perception people have of what women's empowerment is. Just so what are we saying, finally? We're saying, and I want to say this clearly, the men just need to open up. The women should just 
slow down and not shake over too. as if they... Yeah, they should chill. <laughs> do you feel the same way too? I do. I think that balance is required on both balance. sides. And tolerance and, and an attitude change. It's not a struggle, it's not a competition. We're working together in the same world. In the middle class. I don't know whether it's in the high class or in low class area. You the guys middle, middle class, class is the engine room of any it's communal survivalism. And whether we like it or not, if that middle class is not there, nothing exists. That's where the values of society reside, yes. in the middle class. When you talk about the estimation of the right thinking members of the society. That's where they are. That's where they are. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. I don't know whether we thrashed it as, as well as we should, but again, what we're saying is that keep a balance. That's what the former says. And men be bigger than that title, men, and be open to learn more. Thank you for being on Seriously Speaking. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.